This is the real act. I don't even know what it's called. But before I get started, I want to make a statement about Banggood and Relac in general. Relac is a company that nobody in the industry likes, and there's a bunch of company that, companies in China that nobody in the industry likes because they love to copy everything and anything that they see. Anything you put in front of them, they will copy it no matter what. As long as it's popular and people are willing to buy it, they'll copy it. They copy Tommy's frame, they copied a bunch of other frames, they copied a bunch of motors, they copied a bunch of everything. And they are associated with Banggood. And Banggood has a lot of these really crappy companies associated with them. I recently asked Banggood to stop carrying a direct copy of my own frame, and they responded with this response, which I'm going to put on the screen. So I don't know what to think about Banggood. I don't like them, and nobody in the industry really likes them, but they are a necessary evil, and they have this economic advantage of being able to ship stuff worldwide for very, very cheap, something that the United States and other countries are unable to do because of trade laws and whatever. China just seems to have this grip hold on the world in terms of product production. Okay, so let's take a look at this quad. Why have I chosen to even pay attention to this quad? Well, like I said, I'm always looking for cheap things that are very high value because I know that people will be buying everything from Banggood. If you're a beginner, you will probably buy something from Banggood at some point. And I know that they're going to be selling hundreds, if not thousands, of these quads because of the extremely low price point. And it does fly. Not great, but I'll get to that. So why did I actually, what caught my eye and actually made me pay attention to this quad? So if you take a look at the quad, I took a look at the picture and I immediately noticed one thing. It's got an MMCX connector on the VTX. And honestly, I hate UFL so much. That is what drew me in to take a look at this quad. And when I did take a look at it, I thought, well, it actually seems like it might be reasonable. So starting with the electronics, the VTX seems like, you know, a straightforward VTX, nothing special, but you know, who needs a special VTX? The flight controller, I knew it was a Revo board. It was, it's not an omnibus board like it says in the description. It does not have an OSD, which is pretty ridiculous by today's standpoint, by today's standards, but it's $139, so whatever. The flight control is actually kind of nice. It has the IMU on a wire and it's on a foam pad on top of the processor on the flight controller. So. There's your soft mounting right there. That's 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 pretty interesting too. The ESE board looks, you know, just like any other typical low grade ESE board, so it should probably perform, you know, adequately. I knew the camera was uh, one of those 800 TV line CMOS cameras, and um, I also knew it came with a really crappy lens because I have experience with it. it. Back back like two years ago, a year and a half ago, this camera was sold for like fourteen, fifteen dollars, and it was the first like super cheap camera that people could buy. And the motors are pretty awful but you know garbage motors work too they're they're fine i figured you know they would work okay the quad is not the lightest the frame is not the most offensive frame i actually like the fact that it has full camera protection it's got a nice place to strap your gopro you can put different angles on it if you ever get that far in your skill level with the squad to strap a gopro to it the aluminum seems pretty beefy and strapped together tightly so i feel like it might actually hold up to impacts and the carbon fiber on the frame is running in the correct orientation, which a lot of even high price frames don't do that. The biggest flaw I really see in the frame is this line right here, this slit here. It makes it really, really narrow at the very ends of the slit, so you could potentially crack the end of the arm off, but you also have the motor base holding it together, so maybe it is an issue, maybe it's not an issue, I don't know. Overall, it seems like a, a reasonable super cheap package that may be high value and that's why I decided to give it a shot. To my surprise, it actually did come with a whole bunch of spare stuff, including a whole bunch of King Kong 5x4x3 props, which are essentially the worst props I've ever tried. There's a link in the description below to my review of these props that I did a while ago. So I definitely didn't even open that bag. But first let's talk about the setup and the flight performance. So the quad says it comes with an omnibus board, but it doesn't come with an omnibus board. It comes with a Revo board, doesn't have an OSD, like I said. And I could not connect to beta flight. I don't think it even comes with beta flight. I think it actually comes with clean flight on it. I don't I don't know where they even got the clean flight code from. I don't think it's even available anymore. Maybe it is. But I could not connect to beta flight. So if you're a new per newcomer and you pick up a squad, you won't even be able to connect to, to the computer to attach your receiver because it doesn't come with a receiver. The camera has a lens on it that is atrociously bad. It's like a 3.6 millimeter lens with crazy distortion that nobody really wants to fly. It's pretty much nearly impossible to fly a mini quad in a race with that lens 
So like you definitely have to swap out the lens. You've got to load up Betaflight or Butterflight on there, which I didn't even bother trying to like fiddle with it with clean flight. I just put a put uh, Butterflight on it immediately. I'm going to stop there and then talk about the flight performance and come back to the setup of the quad. The flight performance of this quad is pretty awful, and it's awful because of a couple of main reasons, paramount of which are the motors. The motors are really weak. The construction actually doesn't seem too bad, but the quad is just way too heavy for that low of a power <laughs> out of the motors. And that's probably exasperated by the fact that the ESC board cannot probably deliver the amps necessary to properly allow the, fl the firmware to give you a good control and get a good tune out of it so that you have good flight feel. It's definitely not an easy quad to fly. It's actually very difficult to fly. I only flew it for one pack because it was so awful. I didn't even want to fly it for another pack. I could learn to fly this quad well, but it would take me some time. I would definitely have to practice with it. And this is me after, you know, three years of flying, I can pretty much pick up and fly most things. This was a challenge. Honestly, it was a challenge to fly. And I will come back to that in a minute. Now let's talk about the longevity of the quad. The frame will probably hold up fine. The motors will definitely break on you very easily because they feel like they're made of very soft aluminum, which I'm sure they are since it's a very, very low cost quad. The VTX is really, really choddy. It has a very hard time sticking to one channel. It kind of bleeds over all the channels. I cannot figure out what, what um, power level it's on. I cannot figure out anything. There's no OSD, so you really don't know when to land. You just got to feel it in the quad or just fall out of the sky. The flight controller is probably the most reliable thing in the quad because those don't really break that often. And the ESC board is really a crapshoot. You don't know when it's gonna go out, if it's gonna go out. I'm pretty sure if I swapped out these motors and put some more powerful motors on there, I could get really good performance out of the quad. Um, but I wouldn't bother because that would increase the price tremendously. So it doesn't make sense to do that. So now let's talk about the value proposition of buying something like this, something that is so cheap and so crappy that it really is a, it's a challenge for somebody that's experienced to fly and manage. And the experience is very important because if you're a newcomer, you would not know how to flash the firmware, set it up properly to get things running right. You would not know that the camera is so awful that you can't, the, the contrast is terrible. You can't even see where you're going. Not to mention the lens is impossible to fly through. You wouldn't know these things and your experience and the quad is hard to fly. Your experience would just be awful and you would end up not progressing your skill at all. You'd watch Johnny Share's videos and think, oh, I wish I could fly like him. Maybe in 10 years I can fly like him. But in reality, if you flew one of his quads, you could probably fly it pretty damn well because his quads, his quads fly right. So you're gonna run this quad. You're probably gonna break it pretty quick. You're gonna try to repair it. You're not gonna be able to find help. You're not gonna be able to find spare parts or you're gonna have to buy more expensive or different spare parts and try to finagle away. And now you have this half-half, maybe good quality, maybe poor quality components, parts on your quad that's cheap but not cheap, but you don't know, but you can't get help for because nobody knows what the flight controller is and nobody knows how to use anything on the quad. It's a big jumble. Like, why would you do this to yourself? This is what gives people very, very poor experiences. And this is why me and many people one of the reasons why we say don't buy cheap. Don't buy the cheap crap that nobody knows. Buy standard stuff that's not expensive. You can get a Baby Hawk R for $139. You can also get the upcoming kits from Piraflip that I don't know when they're gonna be offered, but the three inch kits are also gonna be $139. Yes, you have to build it yourself, but you're gonna have to build things eventually anyways. So here's what I think is the best way to start FPV and learn how to fly FPV. First and foremost, pick up a controller. Pick up any controller you like with a USB port. You can pick up a Tyrannus QX7. You can pick up, a, pick up a, the original Tyrannus. You can pick up the, the Mr. Steel Tyrannus. You can get the new Dark Knight controller. You can get a Spectrum controller. You can get an Eternity Evolution controller, 60 bucks. That's all you need. You can get a free flight simulator on your computer that it will run essentially on any computer within the last five years. And you can learn to fly. You can learn the sticks. Once you're very comfortable flying in the computer, you will probably have already watched tons of YouTube videos and seen tons of Facebook content about all this stuff. You will have figured out that these things typically have four motors, four propellers, a camera, a video transmitter of some sort, some brain that makes it fly right, some code somewhere, and something that controls the motors. But once you're comfortable flying in the computer, it's not that difficult to learn to build a quad using standard parts and you can get tons of help doing it too because everybody knows how to use these standard parts 
and then you learn to fly that one quad that's good, actually has good stuff on it that perform correctly to the point where you can progress your skill. And now the code is so good that you can actually, you know, fly it. It actually flies well. Three, four years ago when I started, it was so bad the quad could barely fly straight. It was just awful. It was not good. Not to mention that this quad will, you'll probably run into some problems that are unique to this quad that you won't know how to solve because it's just so wonky and weird. So it's just, it's a big predicament. I don't, I know that people are going to be buying this quad, but it's like, it's annoying because it's, it's honestly a waste of money. Like, I wish that I could take all of this garbage off of the market and drive all of the consumer spending towards products that are goods that are innovative that are moving the hobby the sport forward we are already on the bleeding edge of things and i want it to go further and i want it to go faster so yeah there's my spiel about this quad it's actually not a horrendously bad quad if you're experienced and you know what you're doing but if you're experienced and you know what you're doing you will not fly this quad it is a complete waste of time and a waste of money for you that's it i hope this was helpful Take care. Please floss. Floss your teeth. Thank you. Bye.